Very good afternoon, everybody. I was at his house when he first hit me. We hadn't fought or argued. In fact, I was studying for an exam. He pinned me against the wall, called me names, tried to strangle me, stabbed me, punched me, and then tried to break my back. This was eight years ago, when the man that I loved, the man that I wanted to spend the rest of my life with, hit me for the first time and continued to do so for the next eight years. Now, I'm a storyteller by profession. I tell stories. Stories of great love, stories of great angst, stories of great hope. But this was the one story that I was just unable to tell. Because it's not only difficult to listen to, it's extremely difficult to talk about it. But yet, in India, especially in India, we need to talk about it. Because 33% of women undergo domestic violence. That means one in three girls sitting over here will undergo physical abuse at some point in her life. That's 20 million women, more than the population of Australia. Can you just fathom these numbers? And yet, nobody talks about it. And it's not going to get any better, by the way, because the UNICEF has said that 57% of boys in India and 52% of girls, even more shockingly, think that it is justifiable for a husband to beat up his wife. We need to stop this because it's clearly an epidemic and nobody is talking about it. So I finally ended up writing an article this July, uh, which went public. And the result of that was there was an almost an outpouring of messages that I got. When you wrote to me from across India, and they're still writing to me, there was a dancer who messaged me that her boyfriend had broken her spine and she couldn't dance anymore. A very, very famous theatre actress from Bombay called me up and said that her ex-husband had flung a chair at her and once thrown her out of a moving car. Many, many of my college mates messaged me, called me, WhatsApp me, Facebook messaged me that they have also undergone physical abuse at some point in their life. In fact, one of them was married not once but twice to men who have physically abused her. It's seriously an epidemic. It is shameful that this is our country and we need to put an end to it. Now, it's a very complex subject, right? How do you put an end to something that is so inherent in a patriarchal society such as ours? And there is no simple solution. But through the mistake that I have made, with the way I dealt with my situation, the way I dealt with my abuse, I'm hoping that women after me do not make the same mistakes, using me as an example. And I found the two simplistic sounding solutions that I hope work. The first thing is to stop the violence. And the second thing is to stop the silence. Stop the violence. Why should a man never hit a woman? Logically speaking, the worst case scenario is that he can kill her. And this has happened many, many times before, these accidental deaths. Even when the abuser has not intended to actually kill a woman, he has ended up killing her. It can be from something as simple as a slap or a punch or a kick that we do not think can actually kill someone, but it can. Now when my abuser hit me for the second time, he flung me across the bed and I landed on my neck and I fainted. And at that time, uh, I didn't realize how serious it is, but in retrospect, when I think about it, I realized that if I had landed an inch to the left or to the right, I would have cracked my neck and probably died. Even though there was no intention to actually kill me. But more than the bodily harm, more than the wounds and scars that a man inflicts on a woman, there are the psychological, physiological wounds that just don't heal. And this is what men need to be cognizant of. You don't hurt the woman just you know, physically. You hurt her mind, you hurt her heart. You scar her for life. And this is why men need to stop hitting women. Now, I was in New York when all this was happening to me, and I remember that, you know, uh, the abuser, my abuser, and this is what most abusers do, they will control you, they will try to demean you, they want to diminish you, because that's how they retain their sense of power over you. My abuser did something similar. 
He took away all the layers of confidence that I had built in me. All the love that I got from my parents, my siblings, my friends, my colleagues. He stripped it away, layer by layer. He told me that I was dumb, I was stupid, I was an idiot. He told me that I deserved to be hit, that I had provoked him into hitting me, that I was asking for it, much like a reason to. And you know what? This is the worst part. I actually started believing him. I started thinking that I'm a terrible person, that there is something wrong with me. And because of that, he established further control over me. And I started crying. I would cry all the time. I would cry while walking on the streets. I would cry uh, in front of complete strangers. And it took me many, many years to get over it. This is what it does to a woman when you hit her. We need to stop the violence. We don't like to think it happens, of course. It's a very, very difficult thing to think about. But it happens to women all over. We need to tell our mothers, our sisters, our cousins, our best friends, our daughters, that they should not think that they're subservient to men. That they should not allow any man to disrespect their body. That if a man hits them for the first time, they should leave him because he will do it again. A man who hits you once will hit you again. This is the truth. We need to stop the silence. More than anything else, women in our patriarchal society need to start speaking up about this. Now, why am I reiterating to this point? I mean, it sounds very simple. What's the big deal talking about something like this? But it's not as easy as it sounds. I didn't talk about my abuse, and I'm a pretty extroverted, outgoing person. I'm vocal about everything, but I was just not able to talk about it for eight years. I couldn't tell people. A woman needs to break the shackles of our society because in our society, it's called domestic violence and it's just treated as a domestic issue. That if your husband is hitting you, don't tell anybody because you'll bring shame upon the family. This is such a sad way to live that a woman is beaten up and then she ends up feeling ashamed of it as if it's her fault and her mistake. We need to put an end to this. Now, first of all, and I hope all of you listen because this is very important, we need to tell people first to stop getting into abusive relationships. But an abusive man does not come in a car, does he? He's not going to walk around with you know, something stamped on his forehead like Harry Potter saying, I'm going to hit you. So how do you identify an abusive person? Now, my abuser, for instance, was a very calm, mature, intelligent, good-looking man. I would have never imagined that he would actually hit me. But there were certain characteristics that an abusive person will show. If a man is petty, if he is vindictive, if he is very suspicious, if he thinks that the whole world is out to get him, if he wants to take revenge on everybody, if he has a history of violence, which means that he beats up people often or he's beaten up people in the past, if he's seen his family members hit each other, his father hit his mother, his uncle, his aunt. He has then most probably a propensity for violence and every girl should be smart enough to know that before she gives up her heart and her mind and her body to a man, she needs to enter the relationship with some sort of portion. And it's very, very important. The second most important step, and this is going to sound very surprising because it's so prevalent, how do you know you're in an abusive relationship? Now this sounds bizarre. How can you not know that you're in an abusive relationship? It's logical. You'll be surprised. Women actually think that they're not in an abusive relationship. I did not think I was in an abusive relationship till I got out of it. This is because as a society, and this is not just an India, but worldwide, we have defined domestic violence as something very dramatic. Sleeping with the enemy, Julia Roberts movies. If a man does not hit you as badly as her husband hit you, that means that you're not in an abusive relationship. What we read in newspapers, what we see in our TV shows, we think that if a woman does not end up in the hospital, she's not being abused. I know because I was told this, but that is not true. We need to redefine and rethink what physical abuse actually means. If you're slapped or kicked, 
or any form of threat is given out to your body, if weapons are used or threatened to be used, that is all physical abuse. Now, my abuser, for example, would any time we argue or you know, disagree on something, you come towards me with his hands raised in the air and his fist would stop literally inches away from my face. On many of those occasions, he didn't actually hit me. But he always maintained this threat of violence. He had this uh, like Rajput knife, which he carried with him sometimes. And on two occasions, he put it next to my throat and said very jokingly, ha ha ha, what if I slit your throat with this? He didn't do it because I would be standing here today. But the fact is that he's always maintained a threat of violence. This also counts as physical abuse. And you have to be very careful about identifying it. Now once you identify an abuser and you're like, okay, I am in a physically abusive relationship, what can you do next? This is where it gets very, very tricky. Because the first step we need to take as women is to stop the silence. And why do I keep saying this? Because again, it sounds very simple, but it's really not. It's a very, very difficult thing to do. But you have to do it. You have to tell someone. Do you know why? Because the minute you tell someone, you already have a witness to your abuse. If your abuser takes it too far one day, you have someone who's got your back. Talk to your mother, talk to your best friend, talk to your cousin. Go to a social worker and talk to her. Talk to anybody, but tell somebody about it. Don't keep quiet. The second thing you can do is talk to your abuser about it. You can hope that he acknowledges that he's made mistakes, he apologizes for them, and then tries to change his behavior. Take him to a psychiatrist, get him help. And I hope that you can walk to the sunset with him. I really do. But it's a very sad hope that we all cling to, that the ones that we love are going to change for the better. But an abusive man is not going to listen to you. He does not respect you. He wants to demean you. He's not going to take your advice. So it's very, very unlikely that an abusive man will change for you. And you know what? In that case, leave that man. Do not wait around trying to be too patient or too kind because you may end up dead. And this is the reality. It's happened to millions and millions of women in India and across the world. You cannot let your daughters, your mothers, your sisters, your cousins, your best friends be too patient or too kind. They need to get out. If they are in a domestic violence situation or physically abused, they need to leave the man. And you know what? The first step is the hardest. I know because I went through it. It's very, very difficult. Because you don't know what to do. You feel helpless, you feel angry, you feel confused. But you have to do it. You have to get out of the vicinity of the man who's hitting you. If you're married and have children, take the children with you. Otherwise, you'll use them as collateral later. Go to a social worker, go to your parents' house, stay with them, go to a best friend's house, go to a hostel. But go somewhere where you're safe, where you feel safe, and where your children feel safe. There are a lot of laws in India today that protect women now. There are a lot of NGOs. The Domestic Violence Act of 2005 will ensure that you get justice. You don't have to put up or tolerate being kicked and slapped around. Not anymore. There is no need for it. So get help. Ask for help. And even if it feels very, very difficult, you'll get through it. Initially, you'll cry a lot because I know I did. You'll cry for weeks or months or years. But you'll reach a point where you stop feeling helpless or confused or angry. You'll reach a point where you suddenly feel brave again. You're feeling almost like this weight has lifted off your shoulder. And that's a wonderful feeling to get. You start laughing again, you start smiling again, you may even find love again or not. It doesn't matter. Because your future is ahead of you and you can make that future whatever you want. Now, you know, I was sitting down at XLRI. Uh, I want to share this with you that I almost, I actually missed getting to XLRI when I was applying for my MBA uh, 15 years ago. But just one point. In one, one of the sections in the uh, exam, entrance exam. And I always tell people that suppose I'm standing here today as an XLRI alumni, that would have been wonderful. And my life would have shaped up very differently. I did go on to do my MBA, but my life would have shaped up very differently if I'd come here. And I always tell people it's always about that one thing, that one mark, 
that one small step, that one person who can change your entire life, who can change what you're going to grow up to be, or the kind of person that you become. And that's why we need to take this very, very important first step in protecting the women in our country, in saving lives of women and children everywhere. We need to stop the violence and we need to stop the silence. I'd love it if you could repeat after me, the men in the house, please promise me here with all sincerity that no matter how provoked or how angry you feel, you will not resort to hitting a woman. If you don't mind, please repeat after me, stop the silence. Stop the silence. And the men, stop the violence. Thank you very much.